This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. The Ravens offense now. They get set to head back on the field. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions. But some are worse than others. So you can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense. But when you turn it over, it changes momentum. And when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. No, 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 no. Jack, Patriot, Patriot. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. I think the last two plays really illustrate how difficult it is to game plan against this guy because you know he can throw the football, but how about his use of legs as well? What we call those broken plays, you can't account for them. Yeah, those plays, those two that you just mentioned, a microcosm really of how he can hurt you. And his throw is going to be incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. They go play action with Jackson. On the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Vinny Curry. He's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Now the Buccaneers' offensive unit back out on the field. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7 nothing lead. Of course they would. I and mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7 nothing lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. He's got the hook up here to Deshaun Jackson. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. Jameis now on first down. And great. The tight end's got it. No gain there on the completion. Second and 10. Brandon, just mark that under the category of just not successful. Trying to throw the ball just didn't work on that one. Completed it. No yardage. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Here's Winston. And the pressure gets there, and Winston goes down. Terrell Suggs in there to sack him, and that is ten for him now on the year. Winston needing a big play after the sack as he leads the Bucks up on third and long. From the shotgun, it's Winston. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. Some boos coming down right now from this home crowd after that call. Yeah, and that was because of the pass interference call. But for a second there, I thought maybe they'd gotten a look at my uh, appearance as Othello in the high school play. <laughs> you, you were Othello? Not a good one, let me tell you. And Winston lost the football. But it looks like a Buccaneer was able to corral it. Yes, the Bucs have it. Tampa Bay keeps the possession. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, the teammate is able to come up with the ball. And this one's incomplete. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. There is no denying they want to get him involved. That's already the fifth time that they've looked his way in this first quarter. So that tells me defensively that they want to insist on going in that direction. Make sure you've got your best people in the area to try and take that away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Working out of the gun, Winston. He's going to air one out. 
And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. How about this offense already feeling good about themselves with a touchdown already in their first drive? It's certainly come out firing, even though that one was incomplete. With the 7-0 lead, more apt to take a shot like that downfield? Hey, you're one to the good. Go ahead and try and pressure advantage. He's going to field this at the 4. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. And the results for them have not been strong to this point. Two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt. So would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement? Because you had two, two drives with turnovers. <laughs> now they punted it away, so at least they didn't turn it over. So that's good, right? You're going to get some angry users <laughs> reaching out to you on social media. Well, I don't mean to be. I was actually looking for the positive. Silver lining, you know. Now Jackson on first down. He's going to go for a big play now. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And they do finally get him down, but not before he reaches the 41. A big play that time for the Ravens. And even 40 yards. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. No, 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 Jack Patriot. On the ground with their leading rusher from a season ago. It's Alex Collins. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game. And they reacted poorly on that one. Now Jackson on second down. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. Noah Spence in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. Second quarter now, Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis with you. It's the Ravens who have the football. They're in the midst of a nice drive, but facing a third and long here. From the gun, it's Jackson. And the pressure gets to him again. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? That's three sacks now. And this team came into the game in the bottom five in the league in sacks. Yeah, this What's is going not, on? It's not been their bread and butter. I don't know. Is a blind squirrel finding a nut, or is this something they can build on? Well, they found some momentum. They found a crack in that offensive line, and they're putting it to good use. Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. And they'll keep on the ground with Jones. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Let's go, let's convert, let's convert, let's convert. Now Jameis on second down. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. That catch good for five. It's third down. Thank you, 
And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, Winston. Complete, he finds Braid. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. A first down throw for Winston. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Terrell Suggs in there to drop him for his 11th sack of the year. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. He'll get three, but it leaves him with a big hole here on third and very long. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Third and long for Winston. Forced out to his left. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. For a big guy, Jameis sure can move. Did a nice job there picking up the first down with his legs. Let's go now. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 right at the 40. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And down inside the 35, he goes to the 32-yard line. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. Hey, when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Let's go now. They'll try to throw now, Winston. There's the Penn State man, it's Chris Godwin. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Winston to Godwin on the connection there for a Tampa Bay first. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. They go play action here on first down. Flushed out right, and he just throws this one away. Smart decision here, this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it, or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it, no one got it. A second down throw for Winston. Dancing to his left. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. They give him 10 that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice game. The offense on third down tonight, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We're back to Baltimore after this. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. They only got two, but that was enough as they'll convert to make it first and goal. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? It's important to do, especially early in the game like they have. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So the ball's moved to about the one after the penalty. First and goal. Jameis to throw it. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. 
Mike Evans. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Bucs are going to add on to their lead. And he puts it through. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. More now on the return. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. And that's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Now a play fake here on first down. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Jason Pierre-Paul in there to get him. And that's sack number six for him on the year. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. From the gun, Jackson. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them, they've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. This offense really put themselves in a tough spot on first and second down and needing long yardage to try and pick up a first down. And they ended up getting a great run. Explosive, picked up nice yardage. You don't expect to be in this situation on fourth down. But guess what? It all started with what happened on first and second down. Really put him behind the eight ball. Great blocking on the return. It springs him for 25. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. And they had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time, they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive... And this is caught at the 20! And they're going to have this in a great spot way down in Baltimore territory. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. From the red zone now, Winston. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Four down, four down. Throwing, Winston. And he can't corral it. Maybe a big missed opportunity there defensively in the end zone. And now third down. They're going for a receiver there. Already has one touchdown in this first half. A second one not to be. I like where their headspace is, though. I mean, I really like the thought process, right? You got a guy who's already scored one, right? You want to go back to him, continue the hot hand, and make them adjust to you defend. And he's wrapped up. Taken down. Back at the 25. Well, maybe that can give him a little bit of a pick-me-up, a little bit of a jolt. One of the few things has gone right defensively. Because other than that, it's really been a first half to forget. Zero's kick is right through, and the lead will grow. It's now 17-0. So they get the three, increase their lead to close out the half. 
Excellent way to end the drive. Going to the locker room with a little bit of extra momentum after adding three to their total. And the return man, Chris Moore. So, and okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently we're going to get right back to it. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff hey, spent the entire halftime just working with them on here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys. But be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had the fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it. What people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. They'll run it with Jones. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Well, that's the desired outcome coming out of here in the second half of being able to run the football and establish a little bit of pace and maybe even a bit of dominance at the line of scrimmage. And they want that to continue. Way too early to think about this being ball control time. But the way they're running it, you got to think. They may want to continue that and see if they can go ahead and grind their opponents into submission. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. And he's got this down to the 35. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Hey, 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 ready. Black, 22. On first and 10, Winston. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Out routes are always timing routes. And if the timing's off just a little bit, it can really throw off a play. It looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second because he caught it, just couldn't stay in bounds. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Ready, blue ready. Now it's a bootleg with Winston. And Boyd has it over the middle. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. The Bucks on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and six. Here's Winston. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. They had enough yards for the first down, but a clutch hit right there defensively. Jars it free. No first down. And Catanzaro's kick is right through. And the lead now increases to 20 to nothing. So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. 
And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. The Ravens' offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. It was Jason Pierre-Paul who was able to get him down. Well, they certainly have been able to get him going and establish the run, so I think it's time to abandon that plan and start chucking it all over the park. And you know who's excited about that? The defensive front. They got a chance to pin their ears back and get after him now. Now second and seven from the 23. Second down, Collins. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Jackson. Pressure too much. Down he goes. Jason Pierre-Paul. He's the one to get him, and that's sack number seven for him on the year. On is the punter, Cook, who sends it away. Here's Jackson. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Second down, Winston. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across the zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Ready. Move, ready. Right back to him on first down. And across midfield, he goes into Raven territory. The former Charger All-Pro, Eric Weddle, on the stop. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. they got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Second down throw for Winston. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. The Bucks on third down. They've hit four of seven. This will be third and five. Winston now. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, C.J. Mosley. And his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. If they needed a break, they needed to make a play here in the third quarter. Defensively, they did that. Now they got to go quickly and get some points on the board. And the best part is that they made their own break. 
taking the ball away. Now they just look at their offense and saying, guys, let's go. Come on, capitalize on this one. After the interception, here's Jackson. And he's going to be grabbed and pulled down. Jason Pierre-Paul in there to get him, and that's sack number eight for him on the year. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. They'll run the counter with Collins, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of four. Now third down. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. They'll roll him out right. It's brought in complete. It's John Brown. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Here's Sam Cook now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. Now the Buccaneers' offense gets ready to head back onto the field. With this lead and the football, things obviously looking good, but maybe... You know, you've taught me this before. Maybe this is where the defense is hoping that the offense helps them preserve that shutout that they've got going. And it has to be in the minds of the offense that they know how rare it is to get a shutout. So take care of them. Protect them. Take care of the ball. Move it downfield. Run the clock down. You don't want your defense to have to go on the field again the rest of the game. Reward them. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. at the 44. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. I know the game's not over, but there's got to be a sense of satisfaction right now for the guy carrying the football a bunch today. 99 yards, and he has enough time to go over the century mark. Well, you got to get it to him again, right? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You're not worried about losing yardage here. You're not worried about any of that. You just want to get him to the promised land for every runner, 100 yards or more in a game. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Jones. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. The Bucks on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and eight. From the shotgun, it's Winston. And break, the tight end's got it. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. 
The Ravens offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. Right, now, Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. Jackson on first down. It's caught left side by John Brown. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Nice game there, partner, but you and I both know that won't do anything for the final score. They're not going to win this one. Right now, they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> and just to erase that goose egg, nobody wants to be shut out. Escapes the sand. And now he'll tuck it and run. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. Now Jackson on second down, throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Chris Moore was the intended target, and now it's third down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. On third down, Jackson eluding the pressure right. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, Looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hadn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got uh, it. Yeah. See what I he needs better protection, that's for sure. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Detroit! Detroit! And now, defensively, they're going to burn their first time out. Remember, they get an extra time built in coming up here shortly at the two-minute warning. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. Gun, 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 gun. Here we go. It's Jackson on fourth down. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. So no reason not to try it there. And they do indeed convert on fourth. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. Gun, 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 gun. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. He's at the five. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Three down, three down. They pitch it out to Collins. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. What a game this defense has played. They're pitching a shutout, so it'll be fun to watch down the stretch to see if their defensive coordinator continues to be as aggressive as he's been all game long. They come out here in the eye. Now Jackson being chased out, and he will score! Touchdown, Baltimore! Lamar Jackson, his 11th touchdown of the year, and the Ravens cut into that lead. 
I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah, yeah you know, it doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Defense still with three timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them here as the kneel down comes. And now the Raven defense going to call a timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Here's a give to Jones running left. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. And now the Ravens are going to take another timeout as they stop it here with a minute seven remaining. The Bucks on third down, not quite 50 percent, four for nine. This is third and 11. Here's Winston. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. And a timeout here. Timeout taken, whistles blown. Timeout taken by the receiving team. As they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. Fielded just inside the 30. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. On the NFL scoreboard, they've gone to the fourth in Cincinnati. Jackson and the Ravens come up now, first and ten. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. He's got it over the middle. Pushing his way through. They give him a gain of 37. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agree. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. From the red zone now, here's Jackson on first down. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by Corn Elder. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Obviously disappointing, but you had to go for broke here, down two scores. So that forced you to make some throws you definitely wouldn't want to make. And I think this interception is going to pretty much write an end to this one. Winston will kneel down, and that should be your ball game. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So for the Bucks, the final two weeks are going to tell the story for them as they move to 9-5 and five with a win. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to Big D to take on the Cowboys. Meanwhile, for the Ravens, they fall to 8-6 and six with the loss. And they will try to turn it around next week as they head down to Carson for a matchup with the L.A. Chargers. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on EA Sports.